Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Struts 2. What have we learned so far? We've learned about the value stack and how we can transfer data from an action class to the JSP. We have learned how the action object gets stored on the value stack and how the value stack behaves as a virtual object that exposes all the member variables of the action object. And we've also learned how the struts tags accesses those member variables and that's the way it can display those member variables in the JSP. So what we're going to learn in this session is the data transfer between the input request and the action class. We want to understand how the input parameters work. So how can a client pass input parameters into the action class? And that's going to be the focus in this tutorial. Now take a look at our application that we wrote in the previous few tutorials. We wrote a tutorial finder that has a tutorial action and we have a get best tutorial. Let me open up the struts XML. So we have a get tutorial that gives us the best tutorial and uh, we call a business service over here, get best tutorial site and then that business service is actually returning a hard-coded string in this scenario, which is Java Brains. Now, here's the thing. No matter who makes this request, we get a standard response, right? We get the same business service that gets executed. It does not really take any parameters. It just returns a standard response. So this response is fine for somebody who is a Java programmer, but let's say a .NET programmer or a Ruby programmer comes and accesses this website, uh, we are still gonna return Java Brains and that's of no help to them. They wanna see what is the best tutorial website for their uh, you know, area of expertise, their language that they're interested in. So how do we accept an input parameter and have a different response based on the input parameter? How would it work in the case of sublets? We have get request and post request, right? We have parameters for the get request and parameters for the post request. That's how a parameter gets into an, a sublet method and then we can tap into those parameters and act accordingly. Now, how would we do that in the case of an action? Notice here that the, the equivalent of a do get or a do post in the uh, struts to world is this execute, right? We have the business service calls made over here. So this is where you write code to handle a request. Notice that this does not really take any parameters. So there has to be another way of transferring input parameters to the action class. This method specifically needs to have access to the input parameters that get executed, uh, that get passed. So let me run this thing over here. I'll say run as, run on server. Of course, this default URL does not work. Okay, so this is the, this is the URL that we have uh, mapped and then we get a standard response. What I wanna do is have a parameter. So I can have a language equals Java, and then it returns me a Java tutorial website, and I can have a language equals .NET, and it returns me a .NET tutorial website. So this is the intention. So how do I capture this value inside this execute method? That's the question. So the way we can do that in struts is to again expose a member variable of the action and expose getters and setters for that. So let's say you want a parameter called lang. I can have a member variable for this action that accepts that input value. So I will have a private string language and I can generate getters and setters for language. Okay, so I have exposed this value over here. Now I need to find a way to pass that value, this value into 
this language? Well, guess what? We don't really have to find a way because this is automatically done. Uh, we'll just see how it works and then we'll get back to how, you know, who and what and when that's happening. So I'll just change this to language so that the input parameter matches the member variable. And guess what? It automatically gets the value. We can test that out by just doing a sys out over here. get language and that should get printed. I'll save this, let this do a redeploy and now let me access this again. Guess what? Darknet is printed. So this parameter that I'm passing over here is actually accessible in the action class just by having a member variable in the action class of that same name. Now how does this work? Well, the secret is actually in one component that we saw, but we really didn't worry too much about. Uh, let me go back to the, the high level picture of our struts to application. Okay, so this is the picture of a struts to application we saw in our initial tutorial. That was like the second tutorial. So in this picture, we have, we have seen the struts XML. We have seen the action classes, the business servers, the JSP and the tags, but we haven't really talked about the interceptors. So the interceptors is what is doing this work of transferring the input parameters to the action member variables. And uh, the way it does it is very similar to how the tag libraries accessed the member variables in the action, which was through the value stack. So if you recollect, the action instance with the member variables are saved on the value stack for every request. And uh, the action does its processing and it stores the member variables over here, the output over here, and then the JSP would access those member variables by referring to the value stack directly. We learned this in a previous tutorial and this is how data transfers from the action to the JSP. The input parameter transfer is also in a very similar fashion. So what's happening is the interceptor does the same thing, but then it does that before the action processing is started. So what happens is whenever there is a new request, again, as usual, the action instance is saved with the member variables. There might not be any value in the output member variables, but we do have some input member variables also that needs to be filled, like the language in our example. So the language will also be a member variable over here. Now what happens is the interceptors will save the input language. We added an input of .NET or Java or whatever it is, so that value gets saved to the language member variable over here. And then the action does its processing, it accesses this value, does the processing, gets the output, and then saves it into the output member variables. And then the JSP accesses those output values and then prints it to the output. So I hope this flow is clear now. So if we head back to our application, so here, whatever input value we enter will be picked up by the interceptor. And since we have an instance of the action in the value stack, it's gonna set that value to the member variable of this action. So it's gonna write to the instance in the value stack and then this will end up having that value. So by the time the execute method is run, this value will be there in the language member variable and that's how this gets printed. So whatever value you enter here is gonna be available to the action class. So now that we have this value, it's easy to pass this along to the business service. So if you want to have a business service that expects an input value over here, so let's say I have a string, string language, so I can have so, you know, if language dot equals of, let's say, Java, then we return Java brains and else we return
language not supported yet because I don't really know any other <laughs> tutorial websites for .NET at this point of time. So let me just close this over here. Okay, so now we have a business service that listens to the input value and then returns a value accordingly. So you could have uh, complicated processing here that you know checks the database, does searches, whatever you want, because you have this input value. Let me save this and pass on that value over here to this one. We don't need this is out. So I'll save this one as well and let it read apply. Now if I pass in Java, oops, yeah, here you go. It returns Java brains, but then if I pass in any other language, it returns language not supported yet. So this is a very primitive way of getting the input parameters, but then I hope the flow makes sense. Uh, it's the interceptor that's actually saving this value. We don't know what interceptor yet. There are multiple interceptors. We're going to come to that in a different tutorial. But what you need to understand is in order to pass the value, all you need to do is expose a member variable, getters and setters, and then have the same name as the parameter that you intend to capture. And uh, this happens automatically. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to get the value itself. This you can expect that the value will be saved to your member variable and you can just pick that up like I'm doing here and do whatever processing you want. So we're gonna look at a few more ways to access input parameters in the subsequent tutorials, but uh, I hope the way the value stack is handy both for input as well as for output. Uh, that I hope that concept is clear. So see you in the next tutorial.